Okay. All right. <clears throat> Today is the 25th of June, 2008. We are at the uh, Buffalo Erie County Historical Society. Um, we are interviewing Mr. Charles Hensel, a World War II veteran, and the interviewers are Wayne Clark and Kathleen Vogel Matthews. Mr. Uh, Hensel, for the record, would you please state your full name, uh, your Chester. date of birth, and place Chester of birth? L. Hensel, H A E N S Z E L. Uh, we always had to carry the full name because my grandfather wouldn't allow us to change it to H E N S E L. That's He's very sticky about that. Okay. And when were you born? Pardon? When were you born? Where was I? When and where were you born? I was born in Buffalo, New York. And I don't know the name of the hospital, but I was in Buffalo, New York. And that's where I was born and raised, except oh. I... Okay, what was your date of birth? May 14, 1923. Okay. All right, and you attended school in Buffalo? I went to Fosdick Mansion Park High School. And I, when the service was over, I got my degree in uh, business administration because they gave you uh, so many points, you know, by going, getting your service. Okay. Now you graduated from high school? I graduated from Fosdick Mansion Park High School. Okay. And what year did you graduate, do you recall? And that was in 1942. Okay, and uh, when did you enter the service? I went shortly after I... Uh, okay. I, what happened is I went into the down to Buffalo, New York, and I took my... Uh, uh, well, I took my... Uh, Your physical? I, I had my, I took everything... I did the day before because I thought I was going in the field. Uh, I was going into the uh, Air Force because I didn't want to go be in infantry. Mm -hmm. So then, what happened? We, uh, I went home and then I got a notice from the Turner that the, I had been accepted in the Army already. Okay, were you drafted? Drafted, yeah. Okay. But by rights, I had done everything the day before, but I had to go back. Mm -hmm. and do the thing over again. And of course when I left, I went to Fort Bragg, and that's basic training, that's where they trained me for the radio telephone operator. Okay. And when there, from that time on, uh, we were Camp Atterbury in Indiana. I had made one day pass, be the best dressed soldier, and uh, I was allowed to, uh, get one day pass into a two day, uh, three day pass so I could be my brother's best man at his wedding in New York City. Oh. And that's how I got, got into, uh, in New York City at that time. Now my, uh, my brother never left the States. He was on the Coast Guard. Uh -huh. And he has a picture here at the beginning uh, where should have pictures of him coming with a boat or some place in there. And it shows you the boat that I came home on. He was allowed to take pictures of that because he was a Coast Guard fan. They thought he was a photographer. Huh. And he did all that. And I also had a secret code with my father. I said to my father, now if I was going to India, if I was going to uh, to Boston, you know that I was going to the out to Europe, mm -hmm. and if I was in my cousin Arda lived in California, if I said I'd go to Arda's, that means I went to Japan. And that's a secret we had between the two of us, uh -huh. and uh, you're not supposed to do those things, but <laughs> that's not the way we did it. Right? Do you know? Were they censoring your mail? Do you know? Pardon? Was was the yeah. army censoring your mail? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I thought there was something here with that. There's a picture of, on the boat that my brother took pictures of me when I came in to New York City. Okay. All right. Let me let let's go back a little bit. Now you went, you after you completed your basic training, 
Whereabouts did you go next? I went to the, uh, Camp Atterbury in Indiana. Okay. And, and what did you learn there? Well, that's, they put us into division, which is this complete story of the division of the S. Okay. Now, at, at Camp Atterbury, um, did you learn some kind of skill? Like, uh, well, I, was, I learned that in basic training. Okay. When I took the basic training for, uh, for a reserver. Okay, so you yes. were a forward observer. Yeah. And okay. I, uh, I lost a good, well, as I said, we, when I went in and I went up to the front lines, we thought, oh, there was a no quiet section, everything was really nice, and we were new people, and, and they, they took other people and took them into uh, where Patton was. Sent mm -hmm. those people over there, but we, for me, I didn't realize that uh, I would lose so many people. I lost a complete set, a set of uh, six people. Okay. Well, before we get to that, uh, when from Camp Atterbury you went overseas? When I uh, yes. O okay. Um, do you remember when you went overseas? Um, well, I went from, I can't think, well, Camp Reservoir, we landed in England. Okay. Uh, and Camp Reservoir is up north. And I could say we went from there, we went to, uh, we went to the, what happened, we went. Were, were, you, did, were you a replacement, or did you go over with the, the whole unit? The, the, I went, the yeah, outfit, I was uh, a forward observer, and uh, there were six people in that group. Okay. And the six people would make up the complete thing. But well, we lost everything, as I said, when the jeep was if I couldn't put anything in the Jeep, but I thought I could save everything. Mm -hmm. We had to destroy everything. All we carried was a raincoat and uh, uh, overcoat to keep me warm. And for five days, I was wandering around in the area. Once I got into our outfit, I ran into George, who offered to let use part of his blankets. Now, he got hurt, as I told you got scratched mm -hmm. with broken glass and everything. I had never got a scratch on here all the time I was in service. And I was always, what, <clears throat> they told me that uh, uh, when I had to go up there the second time around, because you always went up for two weeks and then you go back and mm -hmm. take it easy. Well, when I was doing this, uh, Better the balls happened, and then I got this certificate of merit. Okay, now you were involved in the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah. And what was your unit? Pardon? What would? 106th Infantry Division, and 422nd Battle of the Sea. Oh, okay. Do you want to hold up that book with the, with the color cover? You just. Okay, um, and you are pictured there where the arrow is. Okay, let me see the cover of that book. Okay, yeah, can, can you just hold that up in front of you? Okay, that was the 106th Infantry Division. Okay. All right, and who was the general that was in charge, do you recall? Uh, there was a Captain Black and, and a and uh, Captain Kelly was in charge of the four reserve groups. Okay. And now I don't know what uh, what happened to him, uh, but this is and this I knew was marked when we got that, so they know who we were. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, do you recall the first time you were? You were under fire, what, what that was like, what you were thinking about? Right. The first time you were under fire by the enemy? Well, I was up the forward reserve part of it, 
and uh, we had to uh, escape and, and go back as far as we could. Mm -hmm. Now some people were caught and they never got out of the, they put, put, put the German PW cage. Uh -huh. But I had uh, was lucky enough to keep my wits and I would stay at night time I would get to a barn empty and I would sneak in there and get some sleep and then keep on going until I got to my outfit. And that's when I ran into our, George was one of our lieutenants, not lieutenants, but uh, sergeants in charge of our group. And as I said, he got hurt and I didn't get scratched on me at all. Mm -hmm. Lucky you. I'm just fortunate. Now, now, how much time did you spend as a forward observer? Uh, ever since I started in my area, I, I, until they uh, couldn't do any more when the Germans had retreated, mm -hmm. then I would go and work for the PW cage, which you saw. Okay. I noticed you had quite a few uh, pictures of uh, the POWs and yes. a lot of memorabilia. Uh, do you want to show us some of the pictures and, yeah. and, and some uh, of the, the pieces you've got? Now, did you, uh, what, what were the prisoners like? Were they friendly or were they belligerent? Now, here's, oops. So here's Kelly, Lieutenant Kelly. And oh, okay, if you can hold that up in front of you, I can zoom in on with the camera. Yes. Is that the top picture? That's the picture. Right. Here are these. Okay, okay. Yep, just hold that there for a second and I'll zoom in on. Okay. Captain Kelly, is that? Pardon? Captain Kelly? Yeah, Lieutenant? Lieutenant, it was a okay. Lieutenant Kelly. And he was, uh, he would be very kind to you when you were up in front lines. The minute he gets behind, then he would act up and. Uh, we just got back from a retreat and you say that, that your finger marks all over the lens and everything else just is very nasty to us. Okay. And some other, there's different shots here of, uh, of my buddies that took different plants, pictures oh, of them. Okay, let, let me just uh, zoom in on some of them here. I see one of the one of the fellows is uh, dressed up in like a white parka. Yeah, and uh, I haven't seen any of these people in years. Did you? They come from different areas, see, because uh, they didn't live in Buffalo. They lived in different areas, so you don't read them. Don't see them and you don't know anything about it. Did you uh, stay in contact with any of them? Pardon? Did you correspond with any of them after the war? Well, I did have, we did have one reunion in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but that fell through the next year. Uh huh. Did you, did you go to it? Travel. Did you go to the reunion? I went to the one in Pennsylvania. Okay. But see, these uh, are different areas and they, uh, but this is a, they, it's the last time they, we want to see a picture of, of the uniform that I gave them. I gave them the uniform for them. Um, I don't know if any place around, okay. I haven't heard of what they did with it, but they, okay. they came and got the uniform and, and they gave me a, a certificate of marriage okay. that, which you have seen. Yeah, you can hold that up if you like. It's right there. I'm a little nervous about this because I haven't talked about it such a long time. Okay. All right, that, that, that's fine. You, my you said my that brother in law <laughs> said that. that even though everything, uh, he says, you never talk about the war. 
We, we lost so many good friends. I mean, mm -hmm. I lost a, a complete set of six people that was in the other four reserve. They went up and I came back. Mm -hmm. And then I, they called me in and says that they destroyed the six of them. Wow. So I had to go and fill in again. And that's what made it bad. Mm -hmm. You think that you lost your good friends that you work with. Yeah. And yeah. war is a horrible thing, I'll tell you that right now. It's not. Now, what about your equipment? Uh, obviously, you were a forward observer. And yeah, we had to destroy everything that we had until we got back to our outfit. And then everything was mixed up, and there was a battle of falsions mm -hmm. all done with. So we had to go to another outfit and use the work. And now, now, what kind of weapon did you carry? I had a uh, carbine. An M1 carbine? And, and my carbine would, uh, uh, we had a, I didn't, didn't shoot one shot out uh -huh. of that because I was so busy with the equipment. Uh -huh. So I didn't uh, shoot any weapons or anything like that during the war. Okay. Now, I, uh, now you, you worked in the POW camp too. Do you want to uh, show us some of the the items that the prisoners made, I think they're pretty interesting. You want to start off with this this piece here? This is one of the uh, yeah. Show us the upside down because that the upside down part of it. That, can you get that? Yeah. Now see these people didn't do much. And I would give them cigarettes, and they would give me these gifts and stuff like that because I didn't smoke. Now it shows the side, the sides of that, the engraving that they they put on the side, the pictures they they put. I mean, yeah, just hold that there. I'll zoom in on that. That's pretty interesting. The the nice work. And can you turn that around? Okay. Do you remember yep. who made that one? Yep. That's his remembrance of Kerr, uh, Hyobram. That's where the city was near. Oh. And, and as you see how, how they did the neat with a na uh, nail. Yeah, that's, that's really something. Okay. And then you see that what they did was take these tins and made the rest of it, and they gave me three of these. I have two at home and this one. Okay. All right, and you want to show us some of that artwork? And then they That's did That's really this nice. Work. Now, did they do that for other GIs too, or just mainly no, for you? Because I was, I was very considerate about them. I made sure that they uh, fixed their soup just for the right. Sometimes people would uh, give them not enough soup, and it just and I would make sure that they would get the right amount. Okay. And they count the number of loaves of bread. If it's, there's a picture of one of these here. Kathleen, can you, can you hand them like some of the, those other pieces there? I'm trying to get this. Once he gets the, uh, yeah. finds the picture. Those are, those are one of these. Uh, we'll do that in a little bit. Okay, well, he's looking for that. I'll, I'll zoom in on some of the artwork here. I'm trying to figure out. Okay. See, I've here's the boat I came in on. Okay. That's what my brother. Should we hold that up? This boat. The boat you came on to? When I came home. Okay. Okay, for glare over here. Okay, no, I got it. That's okay. fine. Here's some more artwork. While we're right. Now I got. This is from the Prisoners of War. Yeah, this is, I have in my bedroom, I have eight of these like this. Okay. Different colors. And you see how candy they were. Here's a smaller one. And then that's. I'm getting a car. little glare if you can just tilt. Yeah, that's good. Do you remember the individual who made this? 
No, it, all German PWs. Right. Okay. And so they really, and they made a charcoal sketch of that. And then there, I had this. Uh, now that, that guy is supposed to be you in the picture? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they made me look like I, I'm a, a brute. And Did then, you give them the paper, the supplies, the. Pardon? Did you give them the material to make this oh, artwork yes. with? I, uh, Were you favored because of that? I, they would do that, and they, I kept everything. My father put those all in frame at home. Mm -hmm. And they also, uh, I don't see it here, but I have a picture of. Uh, Yeah. I'm looking for that. Uh, what? Uh, this is in my uh, newspaper at work. I made. Uh, <coughs> they made a crucifix for the church, and I would fix it. I would give them equipment. So do you, do you want to turn that around? I'll just zoom in on it. See this right down here. Oh, okay. They would, uh, you, you would do, uh, I would give them the equipment for build a, a church, you know, and everything else. And I don't know what happened to it. I had a charcoal sketch of it. And, uh, after all these years. Is Hensel a German name? Hensel is a German name. Now, did, did you speak German? No. No? Not, no. Our family never spoke German at home. The only time that our family would hear my mother and my grandmother would want to keep a secret, then they would talk in German. We would otherwise, we never did. Uh -huh. They were born here. Mm -hmm. My grandma Butcher was born here, and Dr. Albert Butcher, that was his son, my, my uncle, he had Westminster Presbyterian Church. Hmm. And uh, my, uh, all I can say is that I don't speak German, I don't know how to speak it. Uh, um, here's an interesting picture you, you showed us before. Do you want to? Tell about this here? Yes. This was half of the Bell of the Bulge. And George took a copy of it. And many years later, I got this in the mail. And it tells you what happened. And, uh, and that's when we were in the middle of it. We lost 82nd Division, lost at 106th Infantry Division, was lost. And as you see, there's uh, can, hold, hold that up again. I, let me just zoom in on the, on the writing. Okay. All right, got it. Now, uh, as, you, as you see as we go on, uh, well, that's when I got my... They took me into uh, selective service. And I had very good experience after the war was over with. We had to be, uh, we saved our money and then they would give us trips to go through England. Mm -hmm. Uh, Edinburgh, uh, Holland, France, and I would and spend my save my money and do things like that. Other people would spend their money on booze and everything else, uh -huh. and that's why I could see these people. I know I went to uh, <coughs> God bless you. Thank you. I went to uh, uh, England, and uh, I went to church up in. Scotland, and uh, when I came out, this man and woman says, would you like to ride back downtown? So
So, on the way down, they said, would you like to come to our house for dinner? And I said, well, I can't do that because you, you're in that ration. He said, don't worry, he said, I'm, I'm a, uh, I have uh, plenty of passes for food. Mm -hmm. And so they took me for, took me home, and then during the afternoon, we, we stopped at one of the castles and had tea with high tea. And then when they found out that I was going to sleep all the way from London back to London, they, he uh, made a pass for me. I wouldn't have to sleep on the, I could lay down and sleep on the, in a, one of the trains. So I was very well pleased that they were kind to me. Mm -hmm. And I met other people the same way. Uh, I took to, my first trip to uh, Holland. We couldn't have any, uh, they would do anything for candy or anything like that. So we would eat. I would give them candy and then I, I stayed with them so I could see the tour. Uh, and the poor Holland people, they used to eat tulip bulbs for, like potatoes. Uh -huh. You know, you wouldn't believe that they would have that. And uh, they were very good to me every time I went any place. Mm -hmm. People helped me out. Now this was after the war? Yeah. Was there a lot of celebrations going on? When well, we were, uh, well, we went from after the war was over with, we were in, we went to cigarette camps. And that's where we, we didn't know if we were going there or uh, go ship to another outfit or, okay. you never know, you might be landing it in Japan. So it was like Camp Lucky Strike or? Yeah, Lucky Strikes or okay. Chesterfield, whatever they did. Okay. And we, and I was very fortunate that I didn't have to go to Japan. Uh huh. Because they were worse than. Now, now, do you remember uh, uh, when President Roosevelt died? At Truman. Well, 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 Truman took over from Roosevelt. But do you remember about the death of President Roosevelt? Uh, you're talking about uh, uh, Eisenhower. No, uh, no. During during the war, oh, Roosevelt was Roosevelt president, and uh, he died. Then Truman took over, and then Truman yeah. decided to to drop the atomic bombs, and then the whole war ended. Yeah, and of course, uh, we never knew what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Japan, they what they did to Japan. We really shortened the war, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course there's always some pol politics that like, to get mixed up in that, mm -hmm. and they're not always good to listen to what they say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, did you have to do any kind of occupation duty once the war ended? Uh, when I before I went in the service, I was uh, worked for the uh, airplane, Curtis Wright. Okay. My father works for them too. Okay. And now, but when the war ended, uh, I went to college then. Well, be before that, you went to like was a Camp Lucky Strike, and then they sent you home. Yeah, that's uh, they did send us home, and uh, then from there we got our education. Okay. Uh, do you remember when you were discharged from the army and, and where? Uh, and then, I, think um, I think it's uh, here. 26 February 1946. Yeah. Oh, no, I, uh, 7 March 46. But I didn't get any of these service charges or service stamps. Hmm. You know, you're supposed to have uh, for each battle of all, uh, each battle of your head. Okay. I, I never got them. I see you've got the American Service Medal, the yeah. European African Middle Eastern Service Medal, 
Good Conduct Medal, and the World War II Victory Medal. Um, and, and you said you did uh, make use of the GI Bill? I got the, the, uh, uh, the only medal I got was the, uh, uh, for uh, good, good, good Conduct Medal, I should say. I but got that. That's the only thing I had. Th that's the only medal you've received. Yeah. Okay. What well, What we can do? We can take a copy of this, well, and you can have an extra copy. Well, I've got an extra copy. We can see about you getting those other medals. You You should have received those. And if we contact the the uh, the government, you you should receive these other uh, awards. We'll, we'll see what we can do to get those for you. Uh, we'll see what we can do to get those other medals okay. for you. Um, but but after you got out of the service, you made use of the GI Bill? Did you I go went, to college? or? I went away after the war was over, I got home. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Captain Upton, uh, not Captain Upton, uh, the uh, college. Oh, I'm trying to think of it. Or, uh, well, anyways, my education, we went to uh, outside, it was a Navy base in New York, and they sent, that's where I went to school. And then I got my training in education, you know, as work, and... Uh, Were you a teacher? No. But I mean, then from there, I went to the National Gypsum Company okay. in Buffalo. That's where I was. Okay. What did you do for National uh, Gypsum? I was at Cost Accountant. Oh, okay. And I, I came back to Buffalo just recently because everybody's uh, going back home to Buffalo. Uh huh. <laughs> and. Uh, I worked for National Gibson uh, 30 years. Okay. And then I retired from them. And then I came to back, my nieces and nephews said, you've got to come back to Buffalo, that's it. They packed me up and made a movie. Okay. All right. So where did you work for National Gibson somewhere else? What city? Well, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, okay. okay. So you had your home down in Charlotte? Well, I did have a home. Okay. Now, we so sold you everything and moved out. Moved back up here. Because uh, I never got married and I always had, my family was always going through here, going to the south, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and they used to stop and visit me and everything else like that. But later on, people weren't going that way, they were going different ways, oh. so they wouldn't stop. And I see. Uh, did you uh, did you join any veterans organizations like the VFW or? No. No. No, because uh, I they wanted me to belong to one, but I figured no organization. My father belonged to an Odd Fellows, and he had six or seven shoemakers and all that stuff, and he and didn't spend much time with his family or has been with that. So we, my brother and I decided not to join any organization. Okay, so your brother was in the service too? Yes, my brother was in the Coast Guard. And he, he never left the city and he met his girlfriend. Well, at first he got a dear job letter in, in the service from his first girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And then when he got here and to uh, he he went to uh, so how would you put that? Well, anyways, he met a girl in a USO in a church, uh -huh. and he met his, his and he what she he wanted to marry her, and he she said no, I don't want to marry a service person in the service. But they finally got married, and now she she lives in Florida now, uh -huh. and. Uh, he is uh, 90, over 90 now. 
Oh. And he, he's very good, he's healthy and everything else, so. Now, did they get divorced? You no. He, uh, uh, they moved to Florida because oh, they, had, okay, okay. They, they had two homes, see, one in Buffalo and Russia Lake and one in uh, Florida. Well, after a while, uh, it was too much for me. Open the, the water, shut the water off, yeah. it, and did everything. So he decided that he would move back okay. and only go to Florida. Okay, so they're both together saved, in Florida. He saved a lot of money that way because he didn't have to, uh, he could save his uh, uh, by not turning the water on, turn it yeah. off, yeah. do this and that. And uh, he, he and uh, his wife, she's the same age as I am, but he is older than she is. Yeah. And that my sister is going to be 92, and I got a cousin that's 102. Oh my goodness. And she's uh, in the Beechwood home now, but she's, after all, she's 102 years old. Yeah. And I just stopped to see her the other day. Mm -hmm. My, uh, she's a remarkable person and because she's still alive yet. Yeah. Now, did she remember you? Pardon? Did she remember you? Who you? Oh were? yeah. She wanted to know if I moved back here or not yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> she. That's the first question. Are you back here now for good? <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, did you have any questions? Just, I don't, where were you when you learned that the war was ending? I was in Belgium. In Belgium. And uh, we were guarding the a, uh, docks at that time. Mm -hmm. And they would take, every so often they would take so many jeeps, they jump them in the ocean, you know, because they oh, had really? all that equipment was left. And so they had to get rid of it. So they would take all that stuff from, and uh, so many uh, jeeps and blankets and everything else. Some they could give that stuff to some people, but they didn't. They didn't want people to have the wrong opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I think but, there was a concern of messing up the economy with with all yeah. all the military vehicles and. And then people wouldn't be buying cars or anything, so. And one other thing you want to understand that uh, when you see some of the people, how they had to live, mm -hmm. and they lived different than we did. The barn was always right next door to them, and we always have our barns distance from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other question I wanted to ask you is when the hundred it was the hundred and sixth infantry, do you know after you were guarding them, what became of those prisoners of war? Do you know where they went then? Well as I say we didn't get <laughs> after a while uh, these people moved back to their homes and that we weren't part of that group. Now, mm -hmm. now that, that prisoner of war camp was that in France? Uh, no, this is in uh, let's see what it's right on the tip of my tongue here. Uh, if it wasn't in France, maybe it was in Belgium or uh, Belgium. Okay. And uh, oh, there was something there that I had. I don't see it here now, but well, my father had a, a lieutenant that was in the service, and he, my father asked how he was doing. He wrote a letter, part of the letter, saying that I was doing quite well, being that I was a younger kid, and uh, didn't get hurt or anything like that. And I thought I had a copy of that letter. So 
So your father wrote a superior officer and asked I, for I, his version of how you were getting on? Did you do yeah, a saying, little V-mail back? I was trying to ask. Well, I guess I don't have it here. <laughs> That's my dog chewed that one up. Another picture. Uh -huh. huh. And then we had these. Your dog tags? Dog tags. Okay. And because we had that, you use the gas mask there, and that's how it's protected, so you couldn't use any noise. Okay. And here's... I don't understand that. Do you understand that, Wayne? You use the gas... what? <laughs> well, they would... Those, those, were, those little rubber pieces yeah. were part of a gas mask, and, and so they... The door tags wouldn't clang together. They put oh, the, the rubber around, around them. It. Okay, thank you. I didn't understand what that meant. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for your interview. I don't know if I have... Like, I was saying, this is the boat that my brother took a picture of when I was coming in. And being in, he was in the Coast Guard, he, he told me it was a photograph for the uh, newspaper. And that's how I got this picture taken. And that's the picture of the boat that I came in on. Now going over, I want to tell you how nice I, we were allowed to, uh, we never sleep with the boat. Most of the people, because I was a specialist, slept on top shelf. Some of them had to go way down below. Uh -huh. And we never had to do that. And my, uh, as I said, these people, I, I ate oranges and lemons going across because I would get really sick, seasick, but I didn't do that. We landed in Cap Reservoir for, for Thanksgiving dinner. And going from there, we went to, to uh, uh, France, we landed there, and it was raining so hard that we had to sleep in the in the rain. In the, uh, they wouldn't, uh, the French people wouldn't give you any hay mm -hmm. to keep you dry. And when when you look back and look across the uh, English Channel, and you see the white cliffs of clover, clo clover, clover, they were beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I sat in the jeep, and that's where my spot was. And they went across, and we landed in France. France, we went up to Germany. Now, did you participate in the D-Day invasion at all? Pardon? Were you uh, participating in the D-Day invasion? Well, this is a boon taking our outfit that we had. We were <clears throat> in learning to, to wear the old fellows are keeping France uh, cold, for, uh, keep us good for us, because we were learning, and we got there, we had nothing to fear, because they had a beautiful outfit for the outfit, uh, for over, uh, you would be there, and what happened, we would, uh, went up to Germany, and day before Christmas is when the Battle of Bulge was hit, mm -hmm. and we lost. And when I got to a certain outfit, I was so dirty and everything else, I ran into the old farmhouse, heated up the water, I took a bath, I didn't care what anybody said. It was so cold, so, you know, dirty. and. Uh, and of course, this is winter time, and it's the same kind of weather we have here. Mm -hmm. It was really a nice uh, outfit that they left us. To, but after the, we had to destroy everything, and we had nothing left except for our raincoats and our overcoat, which I gave them the outfits. I think you, I don't know if you have, or somebody has my outfit that I had. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I don't know if they have. It's any. in the Historical Society's collection. Uh, Mr. Hensel gave it previously to our curator for the Historical Society. All right. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Well, I hope I can give you the information that I gave. Sometimes you get real nervous about it. Oh, you did an excellent job. Thank you.